consequences you have, and then we're going to discuss the design. And I'm going to think about it between now and the time we do that, and either you will discuss it amongst yourselves and then report what you came up with, or, um, or uh, I'll sort of lead the discussion. I, I kind of want you guys to discuss it yourself, among yourself, all right? Uh, so let's take like, it's like 5.30 now, we'll take maybe a half hour to discuss it. And then I'd like you guys to come up with like one plan, all right? And then we'll share that plan. Does anyone have questions over anything else though? All right, here is the assignment, your next assignment. Your next assignment, well, I don't, I don't need to pull it up in Canvas. What am I doing that for? Your next assignment is to create a simple blackjack game. And I'm going to sketch on the board, but don't think that this sketch is like, don't think that this sketch is like, um, it has to look exactly like this. You can do you can do what you want to on this. And part of your job is to figure out what, what you want to do. For right now, the goal is to play one hand of blackjack and to have the app tell you if you won or lost. Alright? So, you can assume you start each hand with a fresh deck. Alright? So, that simplifies something. What I want, essentially, is this. A button to play. A button to take a hit. And a button to stay. I assume that you, uh, you all know basically the rules of blackjack. And again, if you don't have an objection to coding a blackjack application because of beliefs about gambling or whatever, we'll go with this. But essentially, we're going to have your hand and the dealer's hand. When you hit play, you get two cards face up. The dealer gets one card face down and another card face up. You then hit until you stay or you bust. Bust means over 21. All right? If you bust, you lose. So. If you take hits and you went over 21, you've lost. If you stay, then the dealer's card is shown, and the dealer has no choice in the matter. The dealer has to take a hit if it's less than 17, and has to stay if it's greater than, if it's 17 or greater. So in this case, they'd have to take a hit. If the dealer takes a hit and busts, the dealer loses. If the dealer reaches their, gets 17 or greater, they have to stay. And in which case, you look to see who's closer to 21 without going over. In this case, you would win because you have 18 and they have 17. If they tie, the dealer wins. All right. We just want to play one hand of blackjack. That's it. We click play, you start off over again with that process. What I'd like you to do is to think about what layouts you're going to have, what layout or layouts you're going to have, what views are going to be on those, what classes you're going to have, what attributes and functions are going to be on those classes. Now, I don't expect you to do all that today, but I would think at least, to, and, and I'm kind of doing this collectively because I want you all to sort of get a good start to this, all right, and not sort of flounder around with, with ideas. I would think at least if you could identify which views you'd have, even if you don't identify the views that are going to be on, which, which layouts you're going to have, rather, even if you don't identify which views you're going to have, and which classes you're going to have even if you don't identify the attributes and functions. If you can define any of those extra things, that's gravy. All right, so for the next half hour until 6 o'clock, you folks work on that. And at the end of second, uh, at, the, at 6 o'clock, I want you to give me one sheet of paper that has this. 
I'll put it up on there, and then we'll talk about it. Sound good? All right. And if, if everything's okay, then we'll talk about data structures and infix and postfix notation, all right, which is, which is a lot of fun. Um, boy, that's taken me back a long time. Uh, but anyhow, um, all right, so have at it. Oh, you do have a sheet of paper. Good. Yes, yes. Okay. I thought you were asking if one of you guys had a sheet of paper. I was going to say, this isn't going. Okay. So the class at this point went into, di into discussion mode. Uh, I will resume again after the discussion is finished. Okay. So first, we're going to start with a disclaimer. You could probably solve this problem a million different ways. Okay. We can't do that. Yeah. Uh, therefore, uh, if I say something and it's a little different than what you said, you know, Take it for what it's worth. You know, don't don't take it as a criticism of what you did. It's just that I may have a preference for doing things a certain way or another based on um, just you know experience I've done and so on. Let's start by looking at the layout. All right. I have no problem with the layout. All right. I would not be overly concerned with what the layout's going to look like. All right. When you're designing, there's like the proper level of abstraction, all right? There's like, there's like the things that like, yeah, I'll work that out later. So for example, some of the details about like where the buttons are, what the screen looks like and all that, yeah, you can figure that out. Yeah, just, yeah. So like for design mode, you just need to know what's going to be there. I have no problem with this layout. I do think you're missing a layout. Boy, it would be great if we could cue dramatic music at that point. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. What, what do I think maybe you're missing? And again, keeping in mind, you could do this a bunch of different ways. Uh, will you have vertical linear? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. This would be, no, no. This would be, this would be a whole new layout XML file. Pardon me? Um, maybe, um, but that's not what I have in mind. By the way, you can force your app to be a certain mode. You guys are talking about like, like, well, if it's vertical, uh, it might look ugly or whatever. Or you could, you could say it has to be horizontal. So like, cause I mean, there's a lot of games I've played that are like that, or they have to be vertical. So you can, you can take care of that. Um, but I'm thinking of a, a different XML file. Forget about the orientation or the, the, screen density or anything like that. I would think you'd always have, want to have at least one more. What do you think that one more would represent? How many card image views are there on your main layout screen? I guess it would depend on how many cards. It would depend. So it would be dynamic, right? So there, uh, by, dyna by dynamic, it means that it changes. You're not going to have a predefined um, number of images. You have a predefined number of buttons. You have a predefined labels. A lot of these things can be predefined, but the number of cards is not going to be predefined. When you start out for a split second before you deal, there's none. Then you get two cards. Make you worry, give them a king. As I put it here, another one's added, another one's added, another one's added, and so on. So now that I've said that, what would my other layout be? I'll take a shot. Go ahead. Okay. Does the word inflating mean anything to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. All right. This is going to be whenever you have a dynamic layout where you're adding a, adding a control to something, you're going to take a layout for one of the things that you're going to add, and you'll inflate that layout and add it to a recycler view. Could be, again, if it was maybe if it's oriented differently, it could be a recycler view. It could be a, um, a horizontal layout view. You could do this again a bunch of different ways. 
But I would have, so I would have the main activity layout, which you guys did a great job on. I would add to that a layout for one card. And all it's going to be is an image view. that has a proper property set. Just like in the case of the Twitter search, we add something with just a text view in there, and we inflated that and added it to it. Would you need one for both the dealer and you, or would you just be able to specify like, which layout you add it to? Good question. What do you think? I'm not sure if you specify where it goes in its layout or in the code. Because if you do it in the code, it wouldn't matter, but if it's in the layout itself, then it probably would. Well, well let's, let's think this through. In the case of... In the case of the Twitter search, and I know you have all the code memorized like I have all the code memorized, all right? That was a joke, all right? Uh, the, other, the, the, the layout that we inflated only consisted of a text view. That's all there was in there. And our code added it to the recycle, recycle view, recycler view. That's hard to say. So now that we know that, what do you think we're going to do? Do we need two of them or do we only need one? One and then depending on whether you're drawing from Exactly. We, we only need one because the way an image, the view of a card looks the same regardless if it's a dealer or uh, the player. The only difference is, is what view we add the inflated view to. So we're going to inflate that view, all right? We're going to inflate this layout, create an image view. Then we decide, do I put the image view as part of this view? or I put the image view as part of that view. So we only need one of those. Okay. The other thing, again, I would say, and this is, this is part the art of design, and this is where personal preferences come in, and if you're working, like, for someone, they may have different goals. Like, maybe if you were doing this blackjack game for your marketing department, maybe they'd be really interested in what the screen's going to look like, right? Whereas... Um, if you're doing it for someone else, they might want to know the functionality. Um, so, plus your own personal preferences. At this point, I'm not, I would not personally be terribly concerned with exactly how it looks, but I would be concerned about what is there, all right, if that makes sense. You can always rearrange it later to make it look better or whatever, all right? I would either have these as recycler views, or there are other kinds of scrolling views, or maybe as horizontal layouts, depending on, on that. Now, your classes, great job. I think these are the classes you need. So I don't have anything really to criticize about the classes. I do want to point a few things out. It's good that you added a game, a game rules class. Why is that? Exactly. Maybe even player and dealer could be used for other things. There's other card games where there's players and dealers as well. So maybe even those. But definitely decks and cards, you could write a poker game or you could write a rummy game or something like that. In rummy, how, uh, what's the scoring in rummy? Pardon me? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. But it's something like our face cards were 10 and number cards are worth five and yeah something like that um the thing is is the scoring scheme for rummy is different than the scoring scheme for blackjack all right um so therefore that's not something that is built into the card that's built into the game so therefore the game needs to be able to know all those rules one thing that i try to do too when i'm designing this is there's always like the fly in the ointment. There's always like some goofy little condition that you have to think about eventually. But the question is, do you need to think about it, about it right now at the start? For example, the great thing in this game is the, the bit of the 1 versus 11 for that. You know, it's like, yeah, make sure that's on your list to take care of, but maybe you can figure that one out later. All right? So maybe just write, maybe in your first pass, think of how you will do it ignoring that an ace can be uh, 11 or 1. Maybe just always count it as 11 in your first pass and then refine it. All right, the questions I would have then would relate to 
some of the methods that we would have. What methods do you think we're going to have in the game rules? Okay. Okay. So, did I start recording? Yeah, I started recording. All right. Game rules. So, one method would be is busted. What are we going to give to that? the one responsible for doing that. So in other words, what would you need, if right now I was playing blackjack, I was playing blackjack behind a barrier where you couldn't see me, and you were playing the role of the rules object, and I would say, is my hand busted? What would you ask me? You'd have to ask me for the group of cards that I have. So the player could theoretically have, say, an array list of the cards. Oh, I like this. I like this. You would give this an array list of what? Of cards. Of cards. So I would give an array list of cards, and I'd return a boolean. Yes, I am busted. No, I'm not. So if I gave you these cards, wow, I'm really busted. Yeah. Why would I take a hit on 20? I don't know. And Well, I wouldn't, that wouldn't even be possible. Too bad we weren't playing poker. All right? Uh, but yeah, you look and say, yeah. You're, you'd go and look at You'd do the math. 10 plus 10 plus 10. Okay, you're busted. And so you'd return. So you got a list of cards, an array list of cards, a group of cards. You return back a true or false. What other function do you think is going to be in the game rules? Determine if they want or not. Yeah. I wouldn't say display. I would say determine. All right? Because someone else is handling the display. I lied. I'm still proud of you, but you did miss a class. What class did you miss? The activity itself. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the activity is going to be the guy that displays yeah. whether you want or not. So. Call it get results. All right, I'm playing blackjack behind my invisible shield. And I ask you, oh, go ahead. Yeah, just about arguments real quick, because uh -huh. I was thinking about this the other day. Can you pass uh, a layout as an argument? You can pass any object as a, as a argument. All right, so you could pass that. That being said, in, in, in something like this, you have your, well, usually they call them business rules. This isn't really a business. So I'll call these the problem domain classes. In the UI classes, you really don't want this these guys to know anything about the UI. I, 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 the, the word that they said, they typically say is coupled. You'd want it loosely coupled. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right. So, well, playing blackjack behind my shield again, and you're the rules object, and I say, did I win? What do you need to know? What do you need to determine whether I won or not? Well, we need to know uh, the sum of your cards through the array list. Okay. Okay. We need to check to see if either of you two had busted. Mm -hmm. and, um, and if neither of you busted, who has the greater total? Okay. So what arguments do you need? What ingredients do you need to do that? Uh, a ray list from you and a ray list from the dealer. Yep. Maybe you guys are on a roll today. You need an array list. You need two array lists. An array list of cards. And another array list of cards. 
whereas this would be like arg player, this would be arg dealer. And then I guess the first thing you do in there is probably just call is busted for dealer. You'd call is busted. Very good. Dealer and the player. Yep. Right? What function have we hinted at, but we haven't written up here that the game rules would need to know to be, to be able to do? We've hinted at this. Keeping in mind that we don't want code in two places. Both is busted and get results has to know what? You get the, you get the list of cards, what does it have to be able to do? Let's add them together, right? Do I want the logic to add the cards together both in the is busted class, uh, function and in the get results function? The answer is no. Anytime I say, do you want this code in this place and, I don't even have to get the second one out, say no. <laughs> you don't want the code in two places. What can we do to fix that? We can write a function. What argument is this function going to take? The array list of cards. Array list of cards. So, Evaluate hand, maybe, totally. total hand, whatever you want to say. It'll get an array list of cards, and it will return what? I'd say this would return a boolean. This would say, from the player's perspective, it would say true if they won, false if they lost. There's no such thing as a tie. If it's a tie, it goes to the dealer. All right, evaluate hand, what's that going to return? So we turn it in. Very good. All right. We're on a roll. Let's see what time it is. I did start a little late today. Um, is there anything else the game rules needs? I don't think so. Probably not. There might be something small. But remember, when you're designing, a design is like a plan. All right? A design is a plan. All right? So... Therefore, um, what do I want to say? Um, that would be part of the evaluate hand. You'd look to see, you'd, the way I would do it, I'd evaluate it assuming it was 11. If it's not 11, because there's no point in shooting for a low score in this, right? So if you have a, an ace a six and a four, you're not going to say, no, 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 I want it to be 11, right? It's like, no, you want it to be 21, right? So therefore, um, um, you would assume it's 11, see if they busted. If they busted, then roll it down. Uh, another catch you'd have to do is what if they had multiple aces? You might want one ace to count as a 11, one ace to count as a one. If they had, like, let's say, a, two aces and a... Two aces and a what? Two aces and a nine, let's say. Yeah, that should be 21, because it would be 11 plus 1 would be 12 plus 9 would be. So a little bit of tricky logic. But you know what? Again, that's like, that's like an edge case. That's an exception. That from a design perspective, we know that's going to go in the evaluate hand. We'll figure that one out later. So, I think we're pretty well set on the game rules. Now, for my visual aid, what is a card? What's on a card? All right, a number and a suit. We'll call it a number, even though um, really for some of them it is like jack, queen, and king. So, a card's going to have an attribute of number. In suit. Now you can decide how you're going to save these. 2 through 13, make an 11 a jack, 12, 2 through 14, 11 a jack, 12 a queen, 13 a king, and 14 an ace. Or you could store the word king, jack, whatever. You can figure that out. That's a, a thing. Likewise with suits. You could you could store that. Suit is really only, only necessary as far as displaying a card, right? Because a suit doesn't have any bearing in blackjack. Some cards game is it does, right? If, if I remember 
write certain card games, like bridge or whatever. So, we're going to have get methods for these, right? You have to get the number and get the suit. Do we put the value of the card in here? Isn't the value of the card just the number? No, not, Jack, not for Jack no. King. Yeah. Do we put the value in there? No, because remember, the value of a card is dependent on the game. All that stuff would be in here. Now maybe we have another function that says evaluate card. If we write this function that gets too big, maybe we separate some of the code out here. But this is going to be the function that's going to say that a 10 is worth a 10, a jack is worth a 10, uh, an ace is worth a 10, uh, I'm sorry, 11 or 1. We might do this. We might have code to get the image name here. We could do that. We could do a couple different approaches to this, depending on what you want to do. We could have our app actually physically draw the card. All right. So we could draw a four of spades. Or we could have 52 images and get that. So. You could go either way with that. I think I have a file with, uh, or I think I have a collection of images that you could use for this, where you, so you don't have to find the images. A deck. What does a deck have method? What does a deck have attribute-wise? Well, a deck would have a list of all the cards. Would have an array list of cards. Let me put this over here, since we run out of space. Attributes. I have an array list of cards. Why an array list and not an array? Actually, I was about to ask that because don't you already know the size? Ah, ha, ha, ha. That's why I brought my visual aid in. It depends on the game. Well, it does depend on the game, but let's even assume that this is a standard deck of 52. Oh, I see where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> I deal with it. How many cards are in here? Probably 52. I don't know. There might be some still left in my office. All right, I play blackjack. Deal one to you, how many cards are in here? 51. 51. Deal another one, what's in there? All right, and so, so the number of cards decrease, and that's important, right? Because I don't want to be able to deal the seven or the, the jack of uh, diamonds again. So when it's gone out of the deck and it's in someone's hands, it should no longer be in here. So for that reason, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to make it an array list so I can take things off. This is where I think, and this is why I brought the visual aid in. A lot of times thinking in terms of real life activities is useful. So we're going to play blackjack. Let's, let's look at, I have a card. Each card has a suit and a, we'll call it a number, even though it could be a jack or whatever. Each card has a jack or a number. And that's about it, right? A, a deck is what? It's a collection of cards. When this deck got created, it got created with 52 cards. So there probably should be a method in there that says refresh deck that goes, wipes everything out, and generates um, the, the two through ace of the four suits. Okay? That's why I like having a number, by the way, because that sounds like a for loop to me. All right? Actually, it sounds like a nested for loop to me. All right. So I have my 52 cards. What will the dealer do when they, let's say I open a brand new deck, the constructor's already been executed, and I have my 52 cards. What's the dealer going to do first? Going to give each of you two cards. Probably before that even. Pardon me? Did <laughs> they really do that? Oh, okay. Uh, all right, so I punch a hole through the deck. Then what do I do? Probably going to shuffle it, right? So, again, Thinking in terms of real life, what happens? What do I want? These are the attributes on it. What do I want as a method? I probably want a shuffle method. Now, if you look for an array list, gee, it would be great if there was a method to randomize an array list. I think there is. 
All right, so therefore, hey, that's not hard to do. We just call it to do that. This is an array list of cards. So each element in this is going to be a card. So we actually have a whole bunch of array lists and cards. Each player and dealer has a hand, and the hand is an array list of cards. Could you use a stack to, like a stack of cards? Uh, we more or less are going to have a stack of cards because well, how do we deal? One, after we've done shuffling, where do we deal from? Do we deal off the bottom? No. Do we deal off the middle? No. It really is a stack. So we're going to deal off the top. So there should be a shuffle method. Is that going to return anything? Probably not. What's the deal method going to return? Uh, move the first item in the or what? I guess an array list be the last item. Well, I guess it depends on what you consider. Uh, you can either remove the last item or remove the first item. All right, either way. And what's it going to return? So we turn a card. So there's no argument. We're not telling you which one. We make up our rule that says we pull the last card or we pull the first card. Guess which one I'm going to pull? The first one. The first one. Why is that? Because then you don't have to know the length. Simpler code. <laughs> All right. Really doesn't matter. It's easier to say grab card zero from my array list because. Then I don't have to know, well, after I've dealt five, I have to grab 46. I don't have to do anything. I just grab card zero. And then I remove it from the array list. Is there a method to remove from the array list? You bet there is. All right? Then maybe there is a refresh method that we described before that goes and clears out the array list and regenerates the 52 cards. Do we need anything else more in the deck? Probably not. Again, probably okay for now. Um, this is a good place to stop, I think. All right? We could talk about what the player, player and dealer does, what their classes are going to contain. We can talk about that next time. But this should at least give you a start. Uh, take a look at the resource I posted as far as class diagrams go. All right, so we're kind of doing this together. Um, you guys did a great job on the design. What I was afraid about is that you'd say, well, you're going to have a layout, and you're going to have an activity. Those are your classes and layouts, you know. But you did a good job in recognizing, gee, you probably could do that, but that would give you just a mammoth class that had a whole bunch of stuff, no potential for reuse or anything like that. Whereas this puts us in a good position. We're following good object-oriented design principles by breaking things down in their entities and making sure the stuff is encapsulated. So next week, we will start off talking about the player and dealer classes and what's contained in those. All right, spend some time thinking about that. And we'll pick up with that on Tuesday. All right. That's all I had.